Hi, it's Dwyer, richarddwyer.com, keepingitfree.blogspot.com. I'm an attorney in Northern California. Today is September the 28th, 2017. Right, but first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, sometimes the truth is very unpopular, right? I make these videos about major crimes that have taken place, that are in the news, and sometimes I'm aware of the fact that the point of view expressed is going to outrage a lot of people. They see a crime, the crime is awful. It's awful. The accused might be unsavory, right? Might be someone like Scott Peterson who has cheated on his wife and is a serial liar, right? And it just seems right to convict that person of the crime, right? We need to be careful in doing so. Sometimes the accused, as in the Holly Bobo case, might have had a problem with drugs, might have been a recreational drug user, is from the wrong side of the tracks. Let's say he's not the town mayor, he's not the town doctor, he's not a priest, right? May even have thought that talking about the crime was glamorous with friends. But let's understand, either the prosecution can prove the guilt of the accused beyond a reasonable doubt, that's the legal standard, America, or the prosecution can't, right? I personally don't believe that in the moment when we're dealing with a passionate crime, something that just is outrageous, something that shouldn't happen, I'm not sure that people think clearly when assigning guilt. So here, let's look at some of the facts of this Holly Bobo case. Let me just say, I'm a bit outraged by the verdict, right? Let's look at the facts and let's see if the prosecution had enough to convict Zachary Adams. Right now, I'm not here saying that Zachary Adams is the local Boy Scout leader. I'm not even saying he is a Boy Scout. I'm not saying he doesn't run with questionable characters. But the question that should be asked here is, can the prosecution or did the prosecution prove his guilt beyond a reasonable doubt? Were the witnesses, the key witnesses that the prosecution presented, credible? Now, let me say, the biggest witness for the prosecution in this case, their key witness, their essential witness, was a gentleman by the name of Jason Autry, who claims that he helped the accused, Zachary Harris, dump Holly Bobo's body in a river. Right? I want you to Google the facts of the case. Autry spelled A-U-T-R-E-Y. He claims that they had her wrapped in a blanket. And right before they dump her in the river, she starts making sounds. They realize that she is still alive. So according to Autry, Adams then gets a gun and lays her down on the ground. She's facing face up. He shoots her in the head. Right? That's, that's the testimony from this witness that the accused, Zachary Adams, shoots the victim in the head and he's present as it happens. Right? While the victim is laying on the floor face up. 
right? Now, again, the prosecution's case is only as good as the credibility of the witness. If you have any reasonable doubts about his testimony, you must acquit. Now, let's talk about the first problem here. Folks, there is no physical evidence, right? No physical evidence that Holly Bobo was killed at a river. None. So, we're relying on this witness. The problem, though, is his story is false. Right? It doesn't match the evidence. Bobo was shot in the back of the head. Not the front of the head. Not the side of the head. In the back of the head. Right? She could not have been laying on her back when she was shot in the back of her head. Right? This Jason Autry guy, who, of course, and isn't this surprising, is hoping to get some leniency in his sentencing, right? Has a story that doesn't match the victim's body, right? It's the only story that has the victim being killed down by the river. Let's talk about other problems with the case. Did you know that a convicted sex offender, Terry Britt, confessed to the murder? The prosecution does not even dispute this. Now here's where it gets interesting. I'm sure people get killed and a lot of folks come out of the woodwork and confess to the murders, right? You, you have false confessions in criminal law. But let's look at who believes this confession by a convicted sex offender who was not the defendant. Did you know that at trial, former U.S. Marshal, Senior Inspector John Walker admitted to receiving the confession from Britt? Did you know that another person who believes that Britt was actually the person who did the crime is the former lead investigator in the case for the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, Terry Dykus? Did you also know that Britt just happened to live near the Bobo residence in Decatur County? So here you have the lead investigator for the We'll call it TBI, Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, who believes that this guy did the crime. And then you have a U.S. Marshal Senior Inspector who actually gets the confession from this guy. Did you know, too, that this guy's voice matches the voice of the person Holly Bobo's brother heard talking to Holly the day of her disappearance. Right? Understand, this case is so convoluted that not even the prosecution is contending that the person who spoke with Holly that morning, who her brother heard speaking to Holly that morning, was the defendant who got convicted of the crime. Understand, the person who was with Holly Bobo that morning, who's seen walking away with Holly Bobo, is someone other than the defendant. 
Well, let's get back to the former lead investigator of the TBI, right? This is a law enforcement guy who was trying to solve a case. Did you know that he actually ruled out Zachary Adams, the defendant who got convicted of the crime? who was not the one talking with Holly that morning, who was not the one seen walking away with Holly that morning. Did you know that Terry Dykus, the lead investigator, ruled out Adams as a suspect because Adams carried a cell phone? And did you know that the pings from his cell phone and the pings from Holly's cell phone, the morning of her disappearance, don't match. Right, folks? They don't match. So we're supposed to believe that either this guy puts his phone down someplace else Lucks out when somebody else brings Holly Bobo to him, where he can then sexually assault her, take her down to the river with prosecution witness Jason Autry, and then shoot her in the back of the head in such a way that Autry believed he was shooting her in the front of the head before disposing of her body in the river in such a way that there's no physical evidence of it happening. Folks, Zachary Adams got life imprisonment plus some extra time for this. Right? I believe in a country where we only want to convict the people who did the crime. Right? Where the we want to insist that the prosecution prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Let me just say, this looks awfully shaky to me. I personally have reasonable doubts about Jason Autry's testimony. Isn't he trying to get a lenient sentence? Why doesn't? His testimony match up with the victim's skull, the bullet wound in the victim's skull. Right? I have reasonable doubts. When I hear that someone is supposed to have victimized someone else, they both have cell phones, and the cell phones aren't pinging off the same tower. I have reasonable doubts. When you have a high-profile crime like this and you have seasoned investigators like the lead investigator in the case who believes that somebody else did the crime. Now, I understand. The prosecution wants you to believe that Zachary Adams confessed to the crime to third parties. Right? Let me just say does the alleged confession even make sense? According to Bobo's brother, Zachary Harris, he can't even identify Zachary Harris as the person who was talking to his sister that morning, who walked away with his sister that morning. But yet, Zachary Harris is supposed to have said to a third party that he couldn't have picked a prettier B, right? A prettier girl. You know what word he actually used, right? Well, understand, there's no evidence that Zachary Harris ever picked Holly Bobo. There's, there's no witness who can say that Zachary Harris was the person with Holly Bobo when the brother heard the voice and saw his sister walking away with some guy. Right? So, 
I'm disturbed by this verdict. There are times where you hear facts and someone looks unsympathetic. And this Zachary Harris guy, again, he's not a Boy Scout. Right? He's from the wrong side of the tracks. You're hearing stories about him possibly being a meth user. You know what? The only issue here should be whether he's the person who killed this young lady. Right? That's the question. I don't want to hear about his lifestyle. I don't want to hear about how he's not a model citizen. He's on trial for this crime. Right? And if the crime is such that young guys who want to come across like gangsters are going to try to brag to friends about some involvement in the crime for which there's no evidence, certainly not cell phone evidence, there's no evidence that the guy was really involved, then in my opinion that falls far short of convincing me beyond a reasonable doubt that this defendant did this crime. Let me also say, I know people are gonna talk about the deal he struck with the prosecution after a jury found him guilty in a case that easily could have netted him the death penalty. Let's just say at that point, you're not on even footing in the negotiations, are you? In other words, you fought. You forced this case to go to trial. You're represented by counsel. Counsel has made arguments for you at the trial. You have pled not guilty. You know, once the jury comes back in a death penalty case and says, we find the defendant guilty of this death penalty offense, if the defendant at that point then says, okay, I'll accept life without parole. That doesn't suggest to me that the defendant is actually guilty of the crime. Rather, that comes across to me as a defendant saying, gee, I've just been convicted of a death penalty offense. How do I avoid the penalty phase, given that this jury already believes that I abducted, raped, and then murdered this young lady and then bragged about it to France. Right? So I don't take Zachary Adams' agreement to life imprisonment after the jury verdict to be an admission that he actually did the crime. Anyway, let me hear from you. I know in the press right now, this Zachary Adams person is not the most popular person, right, in criminal law circles, right? Certainly this crime is terrible. It's horrible beyond belief. But don't you have some reasonable doubts about whether we convicted the person who actually did the crime? Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.